Hey folks, we've been asked a lot about the differences between composite uh, and, and aluminum alloy bats and we thought we'd just do a little bit of a speed test with our ZEP lab sensor and our radar gun as well as uh, maybe describing really quickly what, what the differences are just so just so folks understand when they read things on the blog because it's a little bit easier to do in a video than it is to do uh, in writing. But we have we have four different bats here. All four are constructed differently. The bottom one is the Marucci Hex. That's a full piece composite bat. The second one is the 2016 Rawlings 5150. That's a that's a hybrid bat. In fact, the two in the middle are hybrid bats, meaning that the handles are composite. And then there's this transition piece here in the middle of both of these bats here and here. And then 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 you have an aluminum or an a aluminum alloy, right? So they just put some additives in an aluminum and they make it, uh, uh, they put it in a barrel, right? So it becomes an aluminum alloy barrel. Um, the differences between these two bats is that in the Rawlings bat, there is a composite piece here at the end. They do it a little bit differently. You can read more about it on the site, or I think we have a video up on it. But there is sort of a, another piece here that's actually composite at the very end. So they call it, well, you could call it a three-piece bat. Um, same thing with the 716. They actually have this their, their their end cap is their end is not composite, but they have this little true three connective piece. There's a slug inside of here that helps it um, get a little stiffer. Um, so I guess that's a three piece bat too. But but ultimately those two in the middle are hybrids. And then the top bat is the De Marini Insane from 2015. That's a single piece aluminum bat. So that's just all aluminum. The bottom one's all composite. And the question is, is which one has better pop? I mean this this is the big question. If you understand the differences between like aluminum and composite, because really the only composite barrel in this group is this Marucci Hex, the rest are aluminum barrels, of course, with that exception of the very end of that Rawlings bat. Um, remember, if you will, that uh, a, a Marucci Hex or a composite bat is really just a plastic, right? And so the plastic material, it, it, to some extent, over time it actually gets worked in, and that trampoline effect, you can imagine this being sort of the trampoline, the trampoline gets more bouncy over time. Um, whereas with aluminum barrels, not the case, it's, it's, a, it's a metal, so in, in, to put it one way, at, at sort of a microscopic level, it dents over time, and as it dents, it actually has less of a trampoline effect. So, in other words, your uh, composite barrels tend to get hotter over time. Your aluminum barrels tend to degrade over time. When you start looking at different standards, and these are all Little League bats, they put them at 1.15 standards, um, uh, the BPF, you know, the bat performance factor standards. They actually build these, in theory, they try to build these as close to that 1.15 out of the gates as possible, then they degrade over time, whereas the composite bats, they actually build below that standard and then over time they actually build up to that standard. How, how long? Well, it depends on the bat and the manufacturer, but usually about 150 to 200 swings is what people say. But the truth is it will get hotter and hotter until it breaks, and it's not supposed to go above 1.15 um, uh, and not break. So, uh, in other words, that's how that's built, those uh, accelerated break-in tests. So we have the Zep Lab sensor in. That's a lot of talking, but we have, we have the Zep Lab sensor in. We're gonna hit with these, and what we're gonna find uh, we can control for bat speed, which we'll do with the Zep Lab sensor. These are all really close to the same swing weight, so we controlled for swing weight. The question is, is what what ball hits the what bat hits the ball faster? What trampoline effect moves the ball faster? Um, and we can when we can control for some things, we can look. What you're going to find is that the best hit on each one of these bats is really really similar, um, meaning that if you could always hit it in the best spot. Uh, then, then it, the flight of the ball is going to look really, really close to the same. At least the, the ball speed is. But uh, the difference being mainly how big is the trampoline. Um, generally speaking, composite bats tend to have bigger trampolines. Now, 5150 fans and below fans would disagree with that. But generally speaking, composite bats tend to have bigger trampolines than, than uh, aluminum barrel bats. And that's part of the reason... Uh, that younger players tend to appreciate it more because it's just a little more forgiving in a sweet spot size. But, but either way, today all we're going to be able to really measure is what bat hits the ball, uh, or at least at the maximum spot on here, how how quick of a uh, exit a ball exit speed we can get. So, let's get at it. It's enough talking. Uh, Truman's going to be our hitter today, and uh, which one's the sensor in right now, True? All right, so we're going to start with the uh, Marucci Hex. All 
All right, hold on one second here. Let's see, our zip lap sensor still uh, still trying to connect. All right, we are connected. So on the right is going to be our ball speed, and the left will be our bat speed. So let's try to hit it right into the fence. Swing and a miss. Made a 55 mile an hour bat speed there. All right, hit the net. Must be the morning. Come on. There we go. Good, so 56 mile an hour ball speed, 55 mile an hour bat speed. Let's switch that bat now, True, as we got four of them. If you've never played around with the Zep Lab sensor before, uh, it's actually it's actually quite a bit fun. It's this gyroscope and accelerometer that's actually attached to the very bottom of the bats. Um, and there's one sensor that we have. You can actually switch it around um, and and uh, put it inside different bats. Obviously, there's a handful of companies that are doing that these days. Um, Zep Lab sensor Zep seems to have like an absolutely unlimited budget when it comes to marketing. And you know they've acquired guys like Mark Trout. Are we ready for the next one? They've acquired guys like Mike, Mike Trout and, uh, you know, John Carlos Stanton. It, just a bunch of guys who can absolutely rake. And so, um, all right, give us one more. So it seems like Zep Lab Sensor is the only one that you really hear about. But there's actually three or four others. A couple smart bats that will be out here, I think, here in the next uh, three or four months that actually have the stuff built into the bat. That will be kind of fun. All right, there we go. Sweet. Yeah, you can actually go, uh, you can actually replay these things if you've never done them before. You can, uh, and you can change the bat. You can change the person on there. Uh, of course, this person's left-handed. You can see where contact angles are. All those kinds of fun things. Oh, you ready? Hey, hey, hold on a second. What, what bat did we just hit with? I guess we didn't say that. The first one was the Marucci X Composite. Then you hit with the new 2016 716 from Slugger. So that was that that was the hybrid bat. Yeah. All right, now go ahead. Let's do this next one. The other hybrid. This is the other hybrid. So this is the Rawlings. This is the Rawlings uh, um, 5150. So this is that, you know, in theory, a three-piece bat, right? Oh, wow. This is a three-piece bat that uh, has that composite end cap on it. Um, but ultimately, it's a hybrid bat, right? So we have that composite handle and aluminum barrel. One more for that one, True. Hit the net, come on. There you go, 57 and 57, sounds about right. All right, now we're gonna switch out to the single piece aluminum bat, right? So this is the uh, 2015 Marini Insane. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty fun little app. If you've never, if you've never played around with it. We have a full review on the site for it. Um, which you can go check out, but but ultimately it's pretty uh it's pretty straightforward. It does it does just drain the life out of your battery like in ridiculous ways um, on your phone, which is which is rough. So make sure that you uh, um, if anything stand close to a plug when you use it, especially if you use the side by side video. Um, so those are fifty eights. Those are about right. If you've noticed something so far. Uh, and I'll put some notes in here as we as the video is going along. But if you notice something so far, when we're talking about the exit speed of a ball um, versus the bat speed, it's just fun to measure those two things. And I, and I think that's a legitimate way. Here we go. So 54 and 56. One more for us, True. I think it's a legitimate way to, to measure the effectiveness of bats. But, but don't confuse this with um, maybe pure bat performance. There's just so much that goes in. To the effectiveness of uh, of hitting a ball, including you know the, the hitter, what kind of bat they like, and remember, all we're really measuring is the very best hit on these bats compared to the very uh, we're not com we're not comparing the bats that are the, the the best hit along every part of the barrel. Really, we're just measuring one one hit, um, which isn't necessarily what you want. The question is, do you want you know, the best hit ever, uh, the, the ability to have one great hit, or would you rather have the ability to, uh, uh, to hit the ball on average better? And that's sort of the question um, that I don't think is answered here. Um, but it is, nonetheless, it's fun to see when you compare composite and hybrid 
and aluminum bats, um, you tend to compare, you know, how how well the ball is hit. Um, and again, that was 57-57. So turns out the bat speed and the ball speed are real similar, um, at least in our little backyard test here.